Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 7, 2019. Please like, subscribe and share to help support our channel. Get your free trial copy of the new Currency Exchange Planner, the number one must-have tool for Denarians for pre- and post-RV planning. Link is in the description below. Fill out the registration and an email will be sent with special access. Mention the Denarian and get 20% off the full Unleash Planner. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert, and know we all cross the finish line together. First article of interest for today, Iran may have been behind attack on Iraq's ballot base, U.S. State Department official. Iran may have been behind Thursday's attack on Iraq's ballot air base, a senior U.S. State Department official said on Friday, but added that Washington was awaiting further evidence. Iraqi military on Thursday said the two Katyusha rockets landed inside ballot air base, which hosts U.S. forces and contractors and is located about 50 miles, 80 kilometers, north of Baghdad. No casualties or damages were reported in the attack for which there was no immediate claim of responsibility. We're waiting for full evidence, but if past is prologue then there's a good chance that Iran was behind it, David Schenker, Assistant Secretary for Near Eastern Affairs, told reporters in a briefing. On Tuesday, five rockets landed on 9 al-Assad Air Base which hosts U.S. forces in Anbar province in western Iraq without causing any casualties. Shinker called the increasing attacks something of great concern and said Iran has become more aggressive over the past five to six months. The Iranians oftentimes, or have certainly in the past, taken aggressive action when they feel under pressure, he said. The United States ratcheted up economic sanctions against Iran after U.S. President Donald Trump pulled out of a 2015 nuclear pact between Tehran and world powers to choke Iran's oil exports and isolate its economy. In response, Tehran has remained defiant and rolled back commitments it made under the 2015 deal aimed at keeping Iran from developing nuclear weapons. Iran also has been angry over a lack of European protection from U.S. sanctions. Some analysts have warned that cornering Tehran could make it more aggressive. Tensions in the Gulf in recent months have spiked after attacks on oil tankers and a September airstrike on Saudi oil facilities, which the United States blamed on Iran, but that Tehran has denied. Reporting by Humay Rapamig Editing by Bill Burkrott. Next article of interest. Deputy, the blocs are in front of a constitutional embarrassment regarding the replacement of Abd al-Mahdi, and most of them distance themselves. The deputy of the Al-Fatih Alliance Fadl Jaber confirmed, on Saturday, that the political blocs have become a constitutional embarrassment regarding the alternative candidate for the resigning Prime Minister, Adel Abdul Mahdi, after the alliance announced the abdication of the largest bloc indicating that most political blocs refrained from nominating the candidate at the present time. Jaber said in a statement to the information that walkers walked as the largest bloc and put the political blocs and the president of the republic in front of a constitutional embarrassment, indicating that meetings and dialogues continue regarding the nomination of the alternative to the resigned Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi but that no one dares to announce what he wishes and thus most of the political blocs refrain from calling the alternative because of the current circumstances. He added, the matter is sure to lead to a result, otherwise we will enter into a very difficult crisis, expecting that the solution to the crisis of naming the alternative at the last hours before the end of the constitutional period. It is noteworthy that the alliance, as the most numerous bloc in the election results, waived its right to assign it an alternate candidate for the outgoing Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi and submitted this to the President of the Republic. Next article of interest. Parliamentary legal. Sending the budget law by the caretaker government is legal. A member of the legal committee, Hawhar Mahmood, said today, Saturday, that sending the 2020 budget law from the government to Parliament is a legal matter according to the Federal Financial Administration Law No. 6 of 2019 even if it is a caretaker government. 
after accepting the resignation of Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi by Parliament, the government has become a caretaker, and there is a problem. Can the caretaker government send the draft budget, according to the internal system of the cabinet, which states that it is not the caretaker government can send bills to Parliament? In accordance with this system, the cabinet is looking for a legal loophole through which to send the budget. She added, it is true that according to the internal system of the Council of Ministers, the caretaker government does not have the right to send draft laws to Parliament, but the Federal Financial Administration Law No. 6 of 2019 obliges the government to send the budget to Parliament in mid-October every year whether the government is normal or caretaker. For the principle of legislative progression, the aforementioned law must be applied, not the internal system. And she continued, the budget law is not a sovereign business and it has its own nature and differs from other bills. It is a daily necessity, and the legislation of necessity is considered because it relates to all citizens, and therefore the Council of Ministers can send it to Parliament. Mahmoud stressed that the budget law is one of the important laws that differs from the rest of the other draft laws, and who has an objection can go to the federal court and challenge that until it is decided by the said court. Next article of interest. U.S. imposes sanctions on three Iranian-backed Iraqi clerics. Washington on Friday imposed sanctions on three Iranian-backed Iraqi paramilitary leaders who it accused of directing the killing of Iraqi protesters and threatened future sanctions if violence against demonstrators continued. The sanctions announced on Friday are the latest U.S. targeting of Iraqi individuals or armed groups with close links to Tehran as Washington ramps up economic pressure to try to counter Iranian influence in the Middle East. The sanctions target K. al Khazali, leader of the Assay Bal al Haqi Ron backed militia, and his brother Laith al Khazali, another leader of the group, according to a statement from the U.S. Treasury Department. They also target Hussein Fali al Lami. Security Chief for the Popular Mobilization Forces, PMF, Iraq State Umbrella Group of Paramilitary Factions, which is dominated by groups backed by Iran, including Asaib. They were designated under a law that will seize any assets they have in the United States and ban them from visiting. Reuters citing a senior U.S. Treasury official as saying the sanctions were timed to distance those figures from any role in forming a new government. Assistant Secretary for Near Eastern Affairs David Schenker told reporters Washington would be ready to impose further sanctions on others over the killings of protesters if the violence did not stop. Next article of interest. Trump envoy visits Erbil. An informed source said, today, Saturday, that the American president's envoy for coalition affairs against ISIS and the Syrian file, James Jeffrey, will visit the Kurdistan region and the federal capital. Baghdad, with the aim of meeting with a number of senior officials in the region. And Kurdish media quoted the source as saying that, in addition to Jeffrey's meeting this morning with the Prime Minister of the Kurdistan region Masra Rabarzani, he will have another meeting with the leader of the Kurdistan Democratic Party Masoud Barzani today as well. It is noteworthy that the U.S. Special Envoy for the Alliance Against ISIS arrived on Thursday in the capital, Baghdad. Next article of interest. Tehran. Iranian goods account for 25% of the Iraqi market. The head of the commercial development organization, Hamid Zadboum, announced on Saturday that Iranian goods account for 25% of the Iraqi market's imports. Fars quoted Adiyam as saying that the share of Iranian goods amounts to $10 billion from the size of the Iraqi market, which amounts to $4 billion. He added, the U.S. embargo focuses on Iranian foreign trade, as trade conditions are difficult in turn, although we are witnessing an influx of exports to Iraq. And the head of the organization indicated that, in order to increase Iran's share of this market, efforts must be made by exporters, and therefore, for the first time, a commercial attaché was appointed in southern Iraq, specifically Basra Governorate. Next article of interest. Private banks. Between the dominance of the government sector and the citizens' mistrust of it, the Iraqi economy needs to invest capital away from partisan domination. 
the economic crisis, the non-distribution of wealth with justice, class inequality and widespread corruption are the most important aspects that have left negative effects on reality in Iraq and pushed the youth to come out in angry demonstrations that turned into an unfortunate clash between the demonstrators and the security forces, which led to hundreds of deaths and wounded. In light of the deteriorating economic conditions and their impact on the daily reality of citizens, an issue is absent from the scene which the media neglected as the fourth authority and the political, administrative and judicial oversight institutions, or they neglected it on purpose or mismanagement. The role of private banks. The issue relates to the role played by private banks and what was hoped of them in supporting the economic movement and pushing the wheel of development and running various projects in a manner that contributes to alleviating the pressures generated by the increasing unemployment rate among young people, especially university graduates who do not find opportunities to work with the sagging body of the state with employees. Corruption in its institutions has made government jobs the exclusive domain of political parties and administrative officials. In light of this, another factor emerges that relates to the amount of liquid money with citizens and their reluctance to deal with private banks, by depositing that money for the purpose of investment because of the citizens' lack of confidence in dealing with private banks. The number of private banks Initial statistics indicate that the number of licensed private banks in Iraq is more than 70, of which 20 are branches of foreign banks, but most of these banks are only interfaces whose purpose is to participate in the public auction window. In order to shed light on the role of the private banking sector in Iraq and what are the most important obstacles preventing the advancement of this sector, Al Mustakala contacted the president of the Association of Iraqi Private Banks and the chairman of the board of directors of the Asher Tali Commercial Bank, Wadi Handel, who referred to the financial inclusion policy that he launched the Arab Monetary Fund, which is similar to the culture of savings that was prevalent in the Iraqi family in the 60s and 70s of the last century, noting that this culture has been lost since the 80s of the same century and it has become prevalent that the citizen prefers to keep his money at home, contrary to what he wants, financial inclusion. Al Handel added, that a number of banks stumbled, leading to the withdrawal of the negative outlook on the rest of the other banks, which generated mistrust in dealing with them, stressing that this view is wrong, because most of the countries in the world that a bank can falter and quickly regain its places, Stumbling a bank does not necessarily mean that the rest of the other banks are not good and are not trustworthy. Dominance of government banks. Al Handel said that there is another side that has a direct impact on the work of the private banking sector, which is related to the complete domination of government banks on the banking sector and the failure to allow competition. He emphasized that these factors combined generate a kind of mistrust of the citizen towards private banks. The data circulating indicates that despite the presence of a large number of private banks operating in Iraq, its size and activity are still very limited compared to government banks that manage about 91% of the total assets of the Iraqi banking sector, while Iraqi private banks manage about 8% of them, and the branches of foreign and Arab banks only manage about 1%. Concerning solutions to overcome this situation and encourage the investment of money, Handel pointed out that the matter requires before changing the mentality that manages the Iraqi government and its view of the private sector, if the government does not believe in the role of the private sector in building the country and not giving it the full opportunity for this purpose, then how can convince the citizen to do so? He stressed that the developed countries of the world were built only by the private sector and investing private capital that worked to build a strong and influential economy so that these countries are what they are today. Economic Policy in Iraq This brings us to the way in which economic policy is managed in Iraq, which lacks a clear view, and a system that can qualify the Iraqi economy based mainly on oil imports, while neglecting other aspects despite the country's richness in it. On this side, a phenomenon of political parties' penetration towards economic joints and an attempt to dominate them emerges before us, making them related in one way or another to the vision that the parties want them to be even if they are contrary to the interest of the country. The president of the Association of Private Banks noted that officials start as businessmen, but once they reach the position, 
They speak as though they are guardians or guardians and deal with the private sector in a superficial manner. Handel stressed that the interference of political parties in the economic sector and the work of banks is a major reason for the corruption and devastation the country has reached. Reforming the economic system, the call to reform the Iraqi economy requires first building a system based mainly on reducing the dominance of state institutions over the various economic joints and giving way to the private sector and private capital and proper utilization in order to rebuild the country properly away from the domination of factional interests at the expense of the public interest. Next article of interest. The Jordanian king warns against terrorist groups exploiting the situation in Iraq to reappear. On Saturday, Jordan's King Abdullah II affirmed Jordan's firm and firm commitment to stand by Iraq and its dear people with all its components and spectra, while warning against terrorist groups exploiting the current conditions to reappear. Jordanian media reported that the king had contacted Iraqi President Baram Sali, during which he affirmed, Jordan's deep desire for the brothers in Iraq to overcome the current conditions on the basis of consensus among all components of the Iraqi people on the ways, means and paths that will ensure that the brotherly Iraq proceeds with stability, confidence and national consensus on the path of strengthening stability and security, preserving its unity and political independence, and confronting all attempts to interfere in its internal affairs, tampering with its security and preventing any of the criminal terrorist groups that the Iraqi people have faced with all their sex and components with courage and determination, and defeating them with their solidarity, appearing again is exploiting, as always, the atmosphere of tension. The Jordanian king expressed Jordan's steadfast support and support for all recent efforts aimed at returning matters to their tracks to achieve the aspirations of the brotherly Iraqi people as a whole, and within a framework that strengthens the renaissance of Iraq again and leads to the reconstruction of what was destroyed by the forces of terrorism and evil and leads to the solidification of its internal front and the strengthening of the national unity of its people. And it prevented him, through him to restore his natural place and important position in his Arab environment and on the international scene. In turn, President Saleh expressed, during the call, his appreciation for Jordan's brotherly stances led by His Majesty the King towards Iraq and his people, noting the depth and strength of these fraternal ties that unite Jordan and Iraq, and the strategic and historical ties between the two countries and their two brotherly peoples. Like subscribe to be alerted as breaking news unfolds from Iraq. Your free trial copy of the new currency exchange planner is waiting in the description box below. Register and you will be sent the special access email with the download link. Use the discount code, the denarian and get 20% off the fully unlocked version. Stay informed and stay alert, knowledge is power, and know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Over and out for now, the Denarian.